Shinny with Hendrix Farms. We're out here today to talk about how to train your guineas. I'm going to give you five steps on how to train your baby guineas, your keats, to go consistently into their house at night. One, we're going to talk about proper housing. And then we're going to talk about how to get your guineas used to you so they don't run from you. Three, we're going to talk about a pen setup. Four, we're going to talk about supervised outdoor visits. And then fifth is the consistency of doing this. So let's get started. The guinea housing. There are a few things with your guinea housing that will help make your life easier. We only have a simple four by eight little animal pen. Grew it up in a day. Didn't take much work. Even painted it a candy cane stripe. Guineas don't seem to care, obviously. But one of the important things is making the door wide. Guineas tend to bully each other. Having a wide door, just like your chickens, allows them all to go in without being bullied. Second, we like to have the door open down into the ground. This does two things. One, it prevents them from having a flying instinct if the door is too high. The second thing is that you want to be able to close it up so if the guinea's on the door, it slides them right in. And the next thing I did with this guinea house is that I put a motion detection light above the guinea house. It lights up this area, it keeps them in this area at night. So the first thing you're gonna do once you have your guinea house is then get your guinea keys. Usually between one day to two weeks old is best. At two weeks, they can fly. So do take note of that when you are transporting them home. So, you're gonna put your guinea keys into the guinea house. We do also have a nice little window on our guinea house. We put a screen on it for, for protection from the predators. And also, guineas love, love to roost on sticks. So we have placed a couple sticks across inside so that they can jump up, look out the window at night. They seem to really enjoy that. So, once the guineas have been in their housing for two to three months, this is great. They're used to it and everything's going well. Now, every day that they've been in that house, you need to open that door. They will run to the other end of the pen, always do. But what you're trying to do is calm and tame down basically a wild animal. And they are a little wild. They're not like your stainer chicken, but that's okay because they're gonna serve as the watchdog of your property. They're gonna eat all your chicks. They're not really scared of anything, including my 85 pound farm dog. So just no fear. But when they were small, up until the point they were two or three months old, every day we would open that door, we'd fling one side of their pen, they'd run to the other, and then we'd usher them to the other side, we'd fling this side, we'd talk calmly to them, no sudden movements, staying calm with them. They got used to this. We'd also give them a little billet, which is guinea crap. They love it. It's like sugar to a two-year-old. Give it in moderation, but they loved it. So they knew that every day that door was going to be open. It was going to be cleaned. They were going to get food and water, and they were going to get a little treat. They stopped running as much. They would come up to you a lot more. You make sure you put your hand in there. Get them very, very used to you as babies. If you can handle them as much as possible when they're young, ours were two weeks old. They were very skittish when we got them. But as you can see now, they really just come up to you. They really have no fear. Now, the other part of this is building a run around at the entrance of your housing out. We have a pretty good size run. I would say it's probably probably at least 10 to 12 feet long. And we kind of curved it in, not intentionally, but it seems to work pretty well. But we have it so that when we get the guineas into the run, they can't just scatter. They're basically being ushered in to the door. This is great. But we left them into the run about another month. And honestly, it took them a week before they were brave enough to come down the ramp even into the run, which is a great indication that they now consider their guinea house a safe place and they're going to go there so when we built the, the run we used chicken wire on the bottom two by three fencing on the top it's six feet tall chicken wire for the ceiling make sure you have a ceiling on this thing guineas can fly 
So we put them in here. We let them just get used to having a pen for about another month. And then every night, we walk them back in. They were getting used to that routine. Then, I also put at the end of the run, I have a 4x4 four four board there. Just so the door closes and they can't get underneath the door. This served a wonderful purpose. When you have the 4x4 four four board there, the guinea saw it as a physical obstacle. So even after we opened the door, it took them another week before one or two of them got brave enough to jump that threshold and go outside. And they would only jump it for a second, act all brave, and then run right back in. That's cool. That's another good indication that your guineas are considering this a safe place. Also, it serves as a visual threshold for our farm dog to know that he's not allowed to go in that run, which also means the guineas have learned that once they cross that threshold, if the dog and the guineas are getting to a skirmish, the dog isn't allowed to follow them, and they'll stand on the other side laughing at him. He doesn't like this, but rules are the rules. So, once we started opening the door, we sat and we watched them. We never just opened the door and then just walked away. We sat and we watched them. The first couple days, like I said, they finally got brave enough for one or two of them to jump, they run back in. They're laughing because they say that's not the way it happened. Yeah, it was. Then, after, if you get bored and you just like tired of watching and they're not doing much, just close the door and go back in. It's not a big deal. But eventually, they're going to get brave enough. And what you need to do is have two long six-foot garden sticks and just put it in a V-shape. And you can basically steer them. They'll stay as a group, especially when they're young. They're scared. They're not as brave unless they're together. And then you just kind of guide them where you want them to go. When they first, all of them finally came out as a group, which took a, a, over a week, we just walked them in a circle, just herded them around, walked them right back to the pen, walked them in, shut the door, then walked them back in the house later. This was really just showing them, yes, you can have little excursions, but you're always going to come back here. This is your safe spot. So once the supervised outings are going very well, they're going to want to stay out later and later. Remember, always have those in the late afternoon, never in the morning while you're training, because as it gets darker and darker, they may want to stay out longer and longer, but you always want to bring them back at night. And if you do it in the afternoon, late afternoon, evenings, they're going to want to naturally come back to their safe spot. And that's good training as well. Now, remember, the key is to all of this is consistency. If they get used to a certain routine, it's going to happen every night, this is how we do it, that's going to train them. Never let them roost up in the trees. Never let them get away with staying out all night. They're going to want to continue doing it. They're just like teenagers. Now, because I have the floodlight above the house, 80 to 90 percent of the time, they're all going to be pretty much right here. They're either going to already be in the house, they're going to be in the run, and occasionally one or two of them will be right here on the outside of the pen, but that's okay. Like I said, spread your arms, walk them right in. They, they know the routine, so they usually just go right in once you start walking at them. The a key, again, is consistency. If you let them to stay out once, they're always going to stay out. If you come home late, after dark, but you have this floodlight here, they're all going to be right within this area. So again, all you have to do is finish walking them in. They're, at this point in their life, they should be happy to go in. They're not going to run off into the dark. If you need to, you can always take a flashlight and shine it right ahead of the guineas and walk behind them. They'll walk towards the light. Just So just always keep the light right ahead of where you want them to go, and they'll keep running for that light. And then you can just aim the light to the pen and then right into the house, and they will go there. So that is some of the key steps to train your guineas to consistently go in, protecting them from predators, and getting them to basically be quiet at night so your neighbors can sleep. And then also make sure you put food right here, right in, in your pen, in front of the door, consistently every day. That also helps them go in because they want the food. It is good to have boundaries around your property, whether that is usually a fence. If you've already put up this two by three grid fence, six feet tall, putting it around the exterior of whatever property you have, the guineas are going to hit this and know exactly what this means. This is an area that I'm not to go outside of. 
And if for some reason they do fly, because when they're young they will, they can fly outside of it. Same trick as getting them into their pen. Open up the gate and then spread your arms, usher them towards that entrance. Mine just run back in. They want to be with the rest of their flock, so it's not a big deal. The other part of that is you don't necessarily need a six foot fence. I have a garden within this part of the guinea area, and I don't want the guineas in there. Yes, technically they are supposed to eat the bugs and not my plants, but when you're planting fresh seeds, the guineas will dig fresh dirt and they will dig up your seeds. So I put a just a three foot chicken wire around the garden. The dog could jump it. The dog did jump it when it was a puppy and the guineas can certainly fly over it and get in. But again, the key is consistency. When my puppy would jump in it because he wanted to be with me, I picked up the puppy and I put him back on the other side of the garden fence. I only had to do that about three times with the dog. With the guineas, the guineas would fly into the garden. Again, they do not like having sudden movement. So when they flew into the garden area, I was no longer as calm with them. I would just run up to them with my arms spread and they would get a little scared and they would jump and fly outside of the garden. This behavior only happened when they, they flew into the garden area. They learned to stay out of the garden area. So now, even though my garden is smack dab in the middle of this area where they roam, they walk in a circle around the garden. They eat the ticks and everything else around the garden, but they don't go in the garden. This is important, having consistency. They know what to expect when certain things happen. You can pretty much train your guineas to stay out of an area, even if the fence is three feet tall. But you have to have consistency and it does involve training your guineas and being around them to see these behaviors. If you are letting them out during the day when you're at work and then coming home, they could have done anything during the day. They might have flown into your neighbor's yard, then whatever. So only let them out of the pen when you are here to see what they're doing until they are fully trained. They're laughing because they say they do whatever they want when I'm gone. I don't know. Maybe they do. But at least they're here when I get back and they go home at night. So that is the, the five things that we have done to make sure our guineas go home at night. Wish you the best of luck. Leave me a, a note in the comments to let me know if this works for you. See, here you can see the food buckets, guineas are around, but it, again, I'm just walking a little towards them and already just pushing up one of my arms. And as you can see, we're just walking really slow. It's not even time for bedtime. And you can see they're walking right towards their house. You can see they're already just starting to come right in. They know the routine, come on guys, yep show them how it's done. You can see they're already walking 
right up to where they should be and going right into their house. They know the routine at this point. So at this point, I've shut the door behind me. They can't get out. And notice they've already gone into their house. They're in their house. I'm just shutting them in and giving them a little latch. And now they're in their house. Shut up for the night. They have a nice perch in there. But again, it's not nighttime. Again, I'm just doing this for illustration. So I open the door back up and I'm just gonna let them right back out at this point. But that's how they would be, be done if it was nighttime. Again, floodlight above you. They're laughing at me because it's not nighttime. They're not gonna do anything. But they are, they are trained to do this. As you can see, we're approaching bedtime here. Most of the guineas are in the house. We have two jokers on the outside, one to the left, one to the right of the run. And here we go. Most of you guys are already in. Go ahead, guinea. So when they're stuck here like this and they're just kind of thinking about it, all you need to do is just slowly approach them and they will go right in. And there we go. We're going to last this for a second. We're going to get the rest. The two jokers. We're approaching nighttime. And we're just walking these guys in. All right, guys. Show us how it's done. That's right. Come on, guys. Woohoo! Look at you. And they are both going in. So, when we have two guineas here and we've already shut the door we've done that on purpose so the others can't run out they're just going to run around behind me i'm going to reopen up the guinea if they're in there and these two guys you walk towards them they're just going to run around you and they're going to go right in that's right guys show them how it's done and everyone's in And we're done for the night.